Well, just finishing up at Northfield. Made some new friends tonight. Um, a lot of angry voices in the back tonight of Blanton's Blues Race. 29 and 4, 101 and 2. The issue is my plan was to either get over in front of Elliot Deaton and let him remove or wait for Kurt Sugg to come. He, those were the two horses to beat in the race. Um, you know, Elliot let me over to the front and I jammed the air on right away, you know, kind of dove in wanting him to come back around. But it was pretty clear he wanted no part of that. So I let Blanton up the quarter. 29 and 4 is pedestrian. And that's saying it nicely in that class. And I'm still, I see the TV as I'm coming to the half. There's no one coming. And Blanton is taking full advantage of, uh, of the trepidation, let's say, of the other drivers. I know my horse is the favorite. Kurt's on the wrong. The next horse is the favorite. No one wants to move, right? they think I'm just going to bury them. And in actual fact, I would have let Greg go had he come early. Um, as we get to the half, there was a uh, a substantial amount of profanity uh, coming out of some of the other participants in the race. One in particular, the half and one, one and two was not appreciated. But Blanton's Blue really dogs it on the front, right? And if you're trying to you try and wake him up and kind of get after him and get after him, all he'll do is get hot going into the next turn Act like he's going to pull up and make a break. I've seen him do it a million times. Your best just to leave him alone until somebody gets to your bridle and let him come back on. And that's what I had done. And even when Greg had come to me, I'm like, you know what? He's the only horse left. The only one to beat other than him is in behind me. I'm just going to let him go. And I was going to let him go at the 5 eighths pole, which would have been advantage Greg for sure off those fractions. But at the same token, you know, Blanton was just out there dogging it, right? He's out there for a stroll, a Sunday stroll. And then Greg makes a break. Now, Joey comes. Joey's 19 to 1. I love Joey, and I would have loved to see him win the race. But if I let Joey down in front of me at 19 to 1 down the backstretch with the favorite and then get locked in, because I know that Blanton's not done. He's just playing coy. And if I let Joey down in front of him and then I get up on top of him and, heaven forbid, I get him up the inside and I can't get there, they would have literally lynched me. And I, I just, I couldn't do it, right? I couldn't do it. So I, I left Joey out, and we tried... You know, side by side around the last turn. Elliot gets up the inside. Chris is on the outside. It was a blanket finish. I thought I won for a second. Then I said, well, at least I was second. And then I come to find out after the race I was third. But Blanton's just, he's just ignorant. Now, if I had the earplugs on him instead of an ear hood, you know, and I pulled him coming to the half, does he take off? Maybe, I guess. At that time, I said, well, whatever. I'm going to win a cheat mile and I'm going to have a lot of angry faces. But, you know, what are you going to do? just the way it is so uh i end up greg makes a break joey gets beat anthony gets beat chris lems wins good for chris and elliot deaton gets up for a second blanton's blue should have won easily but just because you have the best horse doesn't mean you're gonna win the race and had i got away i saw that kurt ran leaving leaving the gate but i really just thought that elliot would remove i did not want to be left on the front end I guess that wasn't the worst place to be. Had I been a, got away fifth and just followed Greg, who knows what would have happened. We'll never know, as they say. So uh, a great afternoon this afternoon with Pull the Shoes. Happy to see her win and race well. Uh, a pretty lackluster evening for Blanton's Blue. He raced okay, finished third, but completely in neutral. And as I said, made some people very angry uh, at me tonight, but I'll live. I'll, uh, I'll live through it, I think. It's just the way racing is. You know, nobody's going to be happy. And I really wish that Greg had just come at the quarter pole. I wish Joey had to come at the quarter pole. I wish anybody had to come at the quarter pole. I would have covered them up. And I would have thought, in defense to Anthony, in Anthony's defense, 29 and 4, 101 and 2, at some point, it wasn't, that didn't happen all at once. That was half of a mile. One minute. 1.2 seconds and at no point did anybody come knocking so I don't know what to say other than that just the way the cookie crumbles racing sucks sometimes I would be just as angry if I was Greg or Aaron or anybody else that was in there but I'm Anthony I'm gonna go home I'm gonna brush my teeth and I'm gonna go to bed tomorrow we have 10 to qualify in the morning we have eight to train by the way so 18 horses between training and qualifying Everybody's got to get up early tomorrow, including the kiddos. 
And uh, when all that is over, I got to make my way over to the Meadows and race uh, race our boy Unbeatable Kemp with in what may very well be his uh, swan song with us. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. For my partners, I'm Blanton's Blue. I apologize, but all I could do it differently tonight was take him off the gate, race him from off the pace. Put yourself in my shoes. The horses to beat on paper are the one and nine. They're going to get away one, two, and you're going to be fifth behind horses that you may or may not want to follow. I don't get to walk it back after the nine makes a break and the one cuts me loose. It's just the way it is. So we were third beat a head, a nose, a neck, but he'll be back in there next week, and I can assure you they won't let him on the front next week. That's for sure. So with that, I'll let you go. Have a wonderful rest of your night. There's only an hour and a bit left. I will talk to you all very soon.